Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Fearless Duchess of Somerset, Anne Stanhope. During the reign of King Henry VIII, there were a multitude of individuals who stood up for what they believed in, spoke their minds and protected their loved ones. Henry was a ruthless and brutal king, and the unlucky individuals who were caught for speaking their truth and being a reformist were more often than not made to pay the ultimate price. Anne Stanhope was possibly one of the very lucky few. Join us as we learn about Anne's life, her acquaintances and her death. Anne was the only child born to Sir Edward Stanhope and Elizabeth Boucher, and after the death of her father, at just the age of one, Anne became the sole heiress to her father's estate. Anne was also a descendant from King Edward III through her mother. Anne is also estimated to have been born in around the year 1510, but that is up for debate. It was then, through Anne's mother's second marriage, that she was introduced to the court of King Henry VIII. You see, her mother met and married Sir Richard Pagnet, and he was a gentleman of the King's Privy Chamber and Vice Chamberlain in the household of Henry Fitzroy. There isn't actually a lot of information regarding the childhood of Anne, but it is believed that she was a maid of honour for Queen Catherine of Aragon. It was through Anne's service at court that she met her first husband, Edward Seymour. At the time, Edward was still married to his first wife. But there was a scandal surrounding the pair. Catherine, Edward's wife, was found to be having a long-term affair with Edward's own father. And there was doubt about the paternity of the couple's second son. Edward was extremely upset when he discovered the truth, and the fact that it was his own father sent him into a rage. Catherine was sent to a nunnery, and both children were disowned. Edward did not know if they were his children or his brothers, and therefore felt he could not live his life wandering. Now, there is no actual proof that it was Edward's father who committed the affair with Catherine, but that is what many historians believe. Sometime before the 9th of March, 1535, Anne and Edward were eventually married. Their first child, was actually born on the same day as Prince Edward, on the 12th of October 1535, and she was called Jane. It is thought that she was named after the Queen, but sadly, Jane did not survive, and then again, in 1538, the couple had a boy, Henry, named after the King, but he too did not survive. Their third child, a son called Edward, after his father, was born in 1539, and next, they had a son and a daughter, who were born in 1540, Margaret and Henry, and they were presumed twins. The following year, in 1451, a daughter named Jane was born, and the last of the children were Mary, Catherine, another Edward and Elizabeth. Anne Stanhope was 40 years old when she had their last child. Anne then supposedly insisted that Edward remove his sons from his first marriage from his will, she wanted her children to be the ones to benefit from his standing in society. Interestingly, Anne was thought to be acquainted with, and potentially even friends with, Anne Askew. It's thought they shared the same reformist beliefs, but with one big difference between the two. One of these women was prepared to die for what she believed in and to protect those close to her, and it wasn't Anne Stanhope. Anne Askew was arrested and taken to the Tower of London. She was a gospeler spreading the word of the Bible. She had decided to write about her time in the Tower and explained that she was tortured on the rack. She told that she was stripped down to her shift before being tied to the device. She was then stretched until she was taut and raised five inches from the table. Anne goes on to explain that she was passed out from the pain but once revived, the whole ordeal was repeated twice more. Anne's torture, it seems, was too much for one man to bear. The Tower Constable ran to the King to demand the torture stopped, but the two men that ordered the torture were Stephen Gardiner's right-hand men, Tom Rothesley and Richard Rich. They both ignored the request to end the suffering, and instead decided that if the torturer wouldn't torture, then they would do it themselves. 
The pain and suffering and violence was only put to an end when Anthony Kingston, the Tower Constable, returned with a royal demand. Now according to Askew, they then did put me on the rack, because I confessed no ladies or gentlemen to be of my opinion. The Lord Chancellor and Master Rich took pains to rack me with their own hands till I was nearly dead. I fainted, and then they recovered me again. After that, I sat two long hours arguing with the Lord Chancellor upon the bare floor. With many flattering words, he tried to persuade me to leave my opinion. I said that I would rather die than break my faith. Anne was the only woman to have been tortured in the tower, and she did not name a single other soul as an accomplice. On the 16th of July, 1546, Anne Askew was brought into Smithfield on a chair due to the fact that she was unable to walk or stand after her interrogation by Thomas Rothesley and Richard Rich. It is possible, and some have said, that Stanhope sent a man in a blue coat with ten shillings to help her. Some have said that Stanhope was responsible for gunpowder being placed on Anne Askew's body to quicken her death. During the reign of Catherine Parr as Queen Consort, Anne Stanhope was on good terms with both Catherine and Princess Mary. Although even Anne's religious leanings were Protestant, she still remained in good stead with Mary once she became Queen. Then, at the end of January 1547, Anne Stanhope's life changed for the better. You see, previously she had been in the household of Catherine Parr, but now Catherine was a dowager queen and Anne became Duchess of Somerset and the wife of Lord Protector. Essentially, she was the most powerful woman in England. Now, it's possible that Anne's quick rising in society could have gotten to her head, especially when she thought that the Queen's jewels should belong to her and not Catherine Parr. You see, Catherine Parr merely wanted the jewels given back to her that were gifts from Henry VIII and her mother. The topic of the Queen's jewels may have been one of the reasons that a wedge was driven between Edward and Thomas Seymour. Now Anne Stanhope felt that Catherine had forfeited her rights of seniority that she had when Henry VIII died and she married the younger brother of Anne's husband. This feud, however, would only last about a year, as Catherine Parr died in 1548 after the birth of her daughter, Mary. After the execution of Thomas Seymour, Anne's brother-in-law, in the March of 1547, his daughter, by Catherine Parr, lived for a brief time at Sion House under the protection of Anne and her husband, before being transferred to the household of Catherine Willoughby, the Duchess of Suffolk. In the October of 1549, Anne's husband was then removed from power and held in the Tower of London. In an effort at reconciliation, Anne and the Earl of Warwick's wife, Jane Guildford, arranged a marriage between Anne's daughter, Anne Seymour, and Warwick's eldest son, John Dudley, who became Earl of Warwick when his father was elevated in the peerage to Duke of Northumberland. Somerset, Anne's husband, was arrested again on October 16th, 1551, and accused of plotting against Northumberland. This time he was executed. Anne was also arrested and remained a prisoner in the Tower of London until May 30th, 1553, even though she was never actually charged with any crime. During the downfall of her husband, Anne kept in contact with her brother Michael to try and stay up to date with what was happening. She wrote to Sir William Pagnet to ask for help. She hoped that Pagnet could find a way to smooth things over with the council members who had now turned against him. She asked, What hath my lord done to any of these noble men or others that they should thus rage and seek the extremity of him? Then, under the reign of Mary I, three of Anne's daughters were at court and Anne was granted a number of properties including Hanworth in Middlesex, where she chose to live. These were a few of the properties that were previously confiscated from her husband's estate. It was at Hanworth, where Anne's son Edward, and the younger sister of Lady Jane Grey, Catherine, 
developed a secret romance. The couple eloped in 1560, but were unfortunately confined to the Tower of London. Anne, however, was careful enough to keep her distance. Then, the year after her son was sent to the Tower, Anne married her late husband's former steward, Francis Nudgate. Little is known about their life together, however. Now, after Anne's son Edward was released from the Tower, he and his eldest son, with Catherine Grey, were released into the custody of Anne and her husband. Now, Anne had such a roller coaster of a life, and it was full of trials and challenges, but she managed to live a full life and died at around the age 77 years of age. She was a reformer and a literary patron, and on the 16th of April 1587, she died at Hanworth Place and was then buried at Westminster Abbey. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.